So when we tell you we miss you, we do. But we are certainly hoping today is going to be an opportunity for you to find out God's got a great plan for you and a tremendous opportunity this week to be in the smack dab middle of His will. Well, we're going to ask you to turn open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. Today we're going to be ministering about some things that I think that will encourage you and help you about things that lead to growth. Spiritually speaking, I think every one of us, when we get up every day, we like to be better off, more in tune with the will of God than we were the day before. I want to know the will of God. you know, And, and yet I know at the same time that it seems like at times we're, we're, we're just really wondering, Father, is this really what you want of me? Is this what you want me to do? And there is a, a decision we make to say, Father, I'm going to trust you. We don't always know definitively that, that we are exactly in the will of God. And there comes a point that we say, Father, I'm trusting you. I'm stepping out by faith. But there are things that we do to be able to, to have that assurance that, yeah, we're going the right direction. How many know, thank God for the peace of God? You know, when you get that peace on the inside, that's something inside that just reaffirms to you that you're doing what God wants you to do. Now, it may conflict with your mind. Because your head a lot of times will tell you, oh my gosh, forget this, what are you doing? You know, we get that. But in your heart, in your spirit, there is an assurance that you just know. Paul sometimes would use the expression that he assuredly gathered. In other words, he was making a, a spiritual decision of this is what I assume God wants me to do. It just seemed like it was good. Times that Jesus said, I perceive. What he was saying is he was reaching out and, and perceiving what was the will of God, not just by the circumstances, by what was on the inside of his heart. Folks, all of us should be able to get to the place where we can reach it down to the inside of our hearts and discern where's the peace. Where's the peace? Where's the peace? There used to be an old-time commercial for Wendy's many years ago. You young folks won't know what it is, but you know, years ago, there was a particularly old, crankety, cratchety old woman and the Wendy's commercial they would have was the tagline was, where's the beef? And, and so a lot of times, you know, people say, where's the beef? And that was something that we'd all, you know, any of us over 40 probably remember. And, and for me, it's always say, where's the peace? Where's the peace? That's what you need to, where's the peace? If you can follow after that peace, you'll be well positioned to be in the will of God. But here in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 10, the Bible tells us some encouraging things about what you and I can do to be able to know we're in the will of God. It says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. What, what basically, there are certain things we need to do, and it says, I need to give diligence, give effort, just basically show up. Y'all get the idea that every day you may not always feel like you're on top. But you can certainly give, you know, and, and, and feel like maybe you're, you know, you're the best. But you can always give your best and in doing so reap a reward from God. I've said it and I know you know it, but a lot of times life is just 90% of showing up. Make sure you show up to God. Make sure you show up spiritually. Make sure you present yourself to God every day. Not because you feel like it, not because you, you know, you're all these things, but rather because God says, I want you, your time, your attention, your efforts. I want the best of you. Give your best to whatever that happens to be. You may not feel the best, but you can give your best. You know, and I guess there are things that we do to be able to say, I'm going to give my diligent best to God. And it says, if I will give diligence, give my best to assure that I'm making my calling and my election sure that I have no reason to think I'll ever fall. God is basically saying, do your best. Show up. Not because your flesh or your emotions or your feelings are, are in line with those, but because God wants you to do it. Folks, some of the best, greatest things God will ever do in your life is despite the way you feel. Despite your emotions. When you're in the, in the middle of things that are going on in your life, you're at the bottom of things, you feel like everything's coming against you. Not, you know, you, you got your wife you kind of maybe a little upset with you. Your kids, you know, they're a little upset with you. You got your job and your situation, maybe some things that you're a little upset with. But you know what? None of that has any bearing on what God can do in your life. Even when you're not necessarily at your best, He still, God is still at His best. And so he's telling us that if I will give diligence, effort to make sure that I keep and do and make sure I keep my calling and my election sure, that I have no reason to think I'll ever fall. 
fall short of what God has for me to do. You say, what do you mean my, my calling and election? Every one of us is called of God to do certain things in life. And you know what? It, and I'm not talking about full-time ministry. I'm talking about being a full-time Christian. Every single one of us is called by God to do certain things. And, and the funny thing about it is, God doesn't expect you to do what you don't know to do. He only expects you to do what you know to do. And so the beautiful thing about it is, I don't need to compare my life with anybody else. I don't need to compare my life with Wanda. I don't need to compare my life with, with, with anybody. Not even with Johnny. What do I need to do? I need to compare my life to what God wants of me today. And if I will do that, then it says that God will see to it that if I put diligent effort into making sure that I do what God called me to do and what he equipped me to do, because every one of us is anointed and appointed. Every one of us is. You're anointed and appointed. And in your job, and in your life, in your relationships, and in your fellowships, and your choices, and your decisions, you are anointed and appointed to do the will of God. Think about that for a moment. Everything you are going to do today, God has anointed and appointed you to be a success at it. I don't think people understand and grab that. They think, well, that sounds great. No, I'm telling you, by faith, you grab a hold of that. Father, I'm anointed and appointed to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. I am anointed. I am graced. I am equipped. I am exalted in the very name of Jesus to be able to do the will of God today. And the choices I make, the decisions I engage in, the relationships that I initiate, those that I perpetuate are going to be steeped in the very preciousness of the love of God. I'll tell you something, you're, you're better than you ever thought you should. I mean, you are. You're better than you've ever given yourself credit for. Because God's a part of who you are. Oh, praise God. Okay. What do we do? Be willing to be submissive to the will of God. Folks, every one of us listens to voices. Every one of us have voices in our head. How many know what I'm talking about? Any of you, any of you know anybody that's been married? Anybody... Know someone that's married. Anybody ever hope to be married? Okay, none of you want to admit that. Okay, great. Praise God. I'll tell you right now, if you're in that situation, you know about having voices in your head. How many of you, are, you know, if you're a kid, son or a daughter, you know about having voices in your head. How many times have you ever gotten a situation where you're ready to do something and all of a sudden you heard your daddy's or your mama's voice in your head Amen. knowing what they would tell you to do or what they were going to tell you after you do what you're thinking of doing you know well i got news for you. we've got we've got voices in our head too we've got the holy ghost speaking and telling you things that you're doing things you need to do things that you ought to be doing and if you'll just simply take the time to say father i need your voice in my head but the problem a lot of us have and it's sad that, that you're listening to the wrong voice. Make the choice of the decision that the only voice you really want to follow above every other voice is the will of God. What does God have for you? In Luke chapter 1, verse 35 through 38, I don't spend much time here. You know the story that Jesus um, came into this world supernaturally by the virgin birth. We all know this. But what we, what we also need to realize too is God had to have help to do this. And you know the story here. It says in verse 35, the angel answered and said, and heard the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. In other words, Mary had to choose whether she was going to be a God pleaser or a man pleaser. Because I will tell you something, her choice was going to really influence some of the things she was going to have to deal with. You know, the fact of the matter is she had to deal with the scourge of the opinions of others because she was supernaturally going to be with child in a circumstance, a situation that uh, was going to reflect ill upon her because she wasn't married. Because she was in a situation where, to be honest with you, shouldn't have been in if you were a good girl. Right? So what ends up happening is what? She had to make a decision. God wants me to do something. 
but the opinions of men are going to be against me if I do. What am I going to do? Every one of us has been in that same situation. Not maybe exactly, obviously, like Mary is, but I got news for every one of us are in those circumstances at times. Are we going to do what God wants me to do, or am I going to go ahead and bow and cower to the opinions of others? Am I afraid what people will think of me? Folks, it's sad, but most times it, it, it really is. We're more concerned with our reputation than we are our character. See, your reputation is what people think about you. Your character is who you are. And I'll tell you something. If you're more concerned with your reputation than you are your character, you're losing on both accounts. And so here we know in the situation she had to make a choice, make a decision. We know in verse 38 what that choice was. Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. She was basically saying, I'm your servant. I'm submitted to you. She said, be it un unto me according to your word. How many of you started your, your day off that way? Didn't we all? I mean, I hope you did. Father, I'm trusted in you with all my heart. I'm not leaning to my own understanding. I'm leaning to yours. In all my ways, I'm acknowledging you and I'm asking you to direct my steps, my paths, my choices, my decisions, my thoughts, my words, my actions. How many of you know you start your day off like that, don't you? And if you don't, start doing that. Because you're setting, as it were, your life in a direction toward the will of God. You know, no one can force you to do anything. I'm going to ask you an honest question. How many of you are a little stubborn? And will admit it? Anybody here a little cantankerous? Yeah. Anybody here a little ornery? <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be honest. You know, we all have personalities, don't we? Yeah. It's amazing. People sit in church like, oh, oh, I am so holy. Oh, yeah, you are. You're right. Okay. I got news for you. We're still people, aren't we? And sometimes your personality can get involved and in, in the way of doing the will of God. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is sometimes you, you, you get in the way of God using you because you get a little bit too obstinate, a little bit too cantankerous, a little bit, you know, I, I want my way. I want to do it this way. I mean, the, the, that, that is not a very conducive thing to making sure your election and calling. You've got to be willing to say, Father, I know I've got a will, but I want your will better. You need to convince yourself that whatever God has for you is better than what you can get for yourself. I'm just saying, you know, if we got folks, you know, maybe some of you watching online as well. But, you know, we've got people that are ready to go to college. I got news for you. You're going to be confronted with so many things, so many distractions, so many opportunities. But guess what? Not every opportunity is supposed to be your opportunity. Not everything that is presented to you is what you ought to be doing. There's going to be a lot of times you're going to have to say no to something because by saying no to something, you can say yes to something better. All the time throughout the rearing of my son, we've had plenty of times we had to have a discussion with him. He's like, oh, I, I, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this. He had an opportunity. And we're trying to tell him, just because you have an opportunity, an invitation, doesn't mean it's what you're supposed to do. You know, a lot of people are going to look at you throughout your life and see what God is doing. And be drawn to you. Be attracted to you. But not everyone who has a design on your life should be given the authority over your life. Let's boil it down to a dating situation. How many know just because someone asks you out doesn't mean you're supposed to go out with them? Just because someone asks you to marry them doesn't mean you're supposed to say yes. I mean, wouldn't that be something... Everyone you asked to marry you had to say yes. You definitely want to be on, the, on the, the first part of that one, don't you? I mean, you talk about being picked for sport, you know, when you were in grade school. You want to definitely be the first one picking, don't you? Think about it. If you were the, down the downtown the, you know, list, what you left with? See, the fact of the matter is you need to realize there's going to be a lot of folks that may look at you and say, I like what I see. But you ought to be concerned with what does God so, see and what does he know? What does he want me to do? Be very selective with your time. Be selective with your attentions, your affections, your emotions, and your sentiments. 
Don't give them away to anybody, but let God be the influencer to where you need to place them. In other words, make your calling and election sure. Be very careful where and in whom you emotionally invest your life in. Because you don't want to be distracted in a, in a way that's not going to please him. Okay, praise God. Romans 11.29 puts it this way. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. They're, in other words, irrevocable. Know this, God does not take away what he gives to you. But I'll tell you, if you live in the flesh and don't do what he asks you to do, assignments can be withdrawn. That anointing is still there, but that assignment may be withdrawn. How many have ever get in, gotten in a situation where you were maybe in a job and God led you to the job, but you allowed your flesh to you know, undermine the will of God in a circumstance or a situation like that? Maybe your attitude got poor. Maybe you, all of a sudden you started listening to distractions. You started thinking... You know, you looked around and somebody got promoted over you or in another area. You thought, well, I deserve more. Next thing you know, you're not valuing what God has given you because you're too busy looking at what someone else has. Stop looking around at everybody else and center your heart's attentions on what does God want me to do. We are spending too much time. The Bible says we need to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He doesn't tell us to look unto others. And we get, do we spend too much time looking at everybody else and thereby assess whether we're good or not, blessed or not? Folks, I'll tell you, whether you're in the will of God or not has no bearing, it shouldn't have any bearing in your life about what other people are doing. What does God have you to do? You're on maybe a different track. You have no idea what God has planned for you. The Bible said, ear has not even heard, nor eye has seen the things God has prepared for those that love him. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is God's got some good stuff planned for you. Why would you want what God's planned for somebody else? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I, 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 we've all done this. How many have ever gone to a yard sale? Okay, back this up. My, my dad used to love garage sales. Much to the, oh my gosh, you have no idea. We would be driving on a family trip to visit family, driving in the middle of whatever, driving down the highway. There'd be a, I mean, he could, he had supernatural insight on the garage sales. It's like we're driving down 55 mile an hour down some country road. And there'd be stuff sitting out in a garage somewhere. My dad's out, that's a garage sale. And I mean, I mean, we're, we're, I mean, it's like whiplash. We're stopped around, boom, whatever, backing up. He'll go up there and he'll go, oh man, I think I saw a whatever. I'm like, how could you see anything at 55 miles an hour going down the highway? Sure enough, there'd be what, what he thought he saw sitting up there. He'd, go, he'd walk up in there and say, oh, they do, they got this. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. And so, you know, there we go, traipsing up into the, you know, looking at stuff. Well, one time we went to this, this sale and all of a sudden they had some clothes up there. And my dad says, oh, there's, there's a couple suits. Looks like they're small, you know. And again, you know, I was, you know, younger year. I didn't grow until later in life, height-wise and all that. So he, I think they got, a, you know, one of these kids. Here's a new suit. And they tried this thing on me. That was somebody else's suit, obviously. Somebody else in the family. Maybe they died. Who knows what. But this thing was like old, okay. So they're here. This thing looks pretty good. It looks... And I'm thinking, and it's like the sleeves are down to here, okay, covering here. The shoulders are down to here. And my, well, you, you could, you'll probably grow into this. And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want this. I don't like it. It's not made for me. It's, I mean, but we, well, we could probably maybe cut off the sleeves. Oh, that's exactly what I want. I want my mom to take a pair of butcher scissors that she cuts the, the, the chicken and poultry with. And my mom's not a sewer. Well, we could probably, and I, I just said, Dad, please don't, I don't want this. But it, it's okay, it's only $4. I don't care how cheap it is. I don't care if they're giving me $3 to take it. I don't want it. But see, sadly, we accept what other people have that are made for them. There's lots of things. God doesn't just have one design. He doesn't just have one plan. He doesn't just have you know one thing going on and around you. He's got something for you. Made for you. 
And I know this is so much better because I had an opportunity to reverse roles when it came to my dad. My dad's in heaven now, as you know. He, he, he's, you know, he left us earlier in the year. But, but one of the gifts I was able to give to my dad was I was able to take him to Bangkok, Thailand. See, I had just left earlier in a missions trip, did some ministry over there in, in Bangkok. And uh, we got talking to my dad. I said, oh, yeah, that'd be fun. I thought, you know, it'd be good to take my dad on a trip. He was young enough still, you know, able to deal you know, around. So um, he had a bunch of frequent flyer miles. And so, you know, my dad said, well, I, I'll cash in the frequent flyer miles. So we flew business class. And we flew over there and let my dad, I, I had some of the things I could do over in missions work and I ministered over there and some of the churches in the, in the Bible school over there and, and also had a chance to visit and we did some fun things with dad. And one of the things I wanted to do for him, I had never done for myself just because when I go over there, usually I'm working 16, 17, 18 hour days. I don't have free time, but I was going to have it with him because it was a little, a, a, a trip that I was able to work around business and personal stuff. And I took him down to uh, uh, one of the tailoring shops that were down there. Very well known that all the expats and ambassadors where they go get clothes made. I, t I took him in there and, and, and I said, Dad, they picked all these Italian fabrics you can pick out, everything else, at great prices. I mean, a tenth of what you would pay. It was, you know, really good. And I remember the smile on his face. I have pictures with the smile on his face at these shops. He's grinning like a goat-eating cactus. <laughs> And, he, and they're custom designing this with the canvas you know, thing out there. And there's six, seven different fittings over seven days. They bring the next, okay, make sure it was good. Everything was perfect, hand-sewn, perfect. Every little thing he wanted, custom-made suits. And I thought back and I said, Dad, I'm, telling you, I'm just glad we're able to do this because I dare say this suit sure does fit you a whole lot better than that one you tried to pawn off on me that time at the garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to laugh about that. Custom made is always better than something made for somebody else you try to make work for you. I just want you, as a believer in Christ, to never be satisfied trying to get something made for someone else to work for you. God's got a will for you, and it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, that has no bearing on it at all. How many years you've been saved, or how recently you accepted the Lord, that does not matter. You have a designed purpose and will for your life today. And you're going to have one tomorrow. And you're going to have one the day after. And there's going to be another one the day after that. Every day you arise and you wake up and you're above room temperature, folks, God's got a will specifically designed for you that day. The gifts and calling of God are without revocation. He's got it in you. Tap on it. Tap into that, would you please? Don't be satisfied with emulating someone else. Be you. Oh, gosh. Amen? Amen? John chapter 5, verse 19 tells us a little something of how we can do this. Because how many of you really want to do that? How many of you would just like to be able to live your best life? And by that, I'm not talking about it. I get so... Oh, I, I get so... It just irritates me when someone uses that expression, oh, living my best life. And all that is, is them getting catered to and they're out on a beach somewhere, something else. And that's their best life. You know what your best life is in the smack dab middle of the will of God? It could be you're, in the, you're out there tired, muddy, whatever it might be, but you're in the middle of the will of God. That's your best life. Because you, if you want all the convenience and everything else, you'll get that when you get to heaven. But on this earth right now, your best life is I'm doing the will of God. I'll tell you some of the most, the most satisfied and, 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 and content moments of my life have been when something God has done through and just manifested you know, in, in, you know, through me in some areas. And I am exhausted, tired, spent. And I'm sitting there thinking, but look what the Lord has done. There wasn't a beach around. There wasn't anything else. It wasn't one. It was see the people's lives get changed, transformed, and transfixed on God. Amen. John chapter 5 verse 19 said this. Then answered Jesus and said to them, Verily, verily, I say to you, 
The son can do nothing of himself except or but what he sees the father do. Now for just a moment here, what he's basically saying is that what Jesus did, he did because he first saw the father tell him to do it. He saw it revealed to him. In other words, he was saying, I'm only doing what God revealed to me to do. Do you understand the why, why Jesus was so impactful, significant in this world? Is because what he did was what God wanted him to do. The thing that we need to bring to prominence and paramount importance in our life is this. I want to do what God wants me to do today. You seek after it. You search for it. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, those who knock, it'll be opened. If you seek, you're going to find. We ought to be knocking and seeking, searching for the will of God. At every moment of our life, we ought to be saying, Father, I want to do what you want me to do today. Now, you need to realize this, though. That means there's going to be a bunch of stuff that isn't the will of God. And you and I as a believer need to be careful that we don't allow interference and distraction to prevent us from doing the will of God. How many of you know there's a lot of ways to go home when you leave here? Isn't there? Hey, Alvin, there's a lot of ways you could go home today, isn't there? A lot of ways. I mean, there's roads everywhere. Man, you pull out of the church parking lot. You've got a choice to make, left or right. Don't suggest straight. Don't suggest straight, okay? You don't want to be Ann Hesh, okay? You know what I'm saying? If you, anyway, you don't, you got to go left or you got to go right one way. But after that, you get down there, you're going to have a nest intersection. If you turn left, you got now, when you get down there, you've got several roads you could choose. And my gosh. But you know what? In life, we need to recognize there's a lot of, lot of roads and choices we can make. But see, God knows that, yeah, there may be some roads you could use and get to and to be okay. But there may be a road you don't need to take. You need to be very careful that when you make choices and decisions in your life, that you're prayed up. That you're in fellowship with God. I know this seems basic to everybody, but you know what? Sometimes if you're not careful, you can let some of these basic things slip by and not do them. You should never for a moment be out of fellowship with God. Amen. Now, what do I mean by that? Folks, how many of you all understand and recognize none of us on this earth are perfect? Anybody here make a mistake? In now, see, for those of you joining us online, making a mistake is a nice way, a euphemism for sin. So when you say, I blew it, I missed it, I made a mistake, I made a boo-boo, what you're saying is you sinned, okay? Well, when you sin, you have an opportunity God has given to us now to receive forgiveness, 1 John 1, 9. That if we will confess it, admit it, turn from it, turn toward God, ask him to forgive us, he will. He will. I said he does. Don't wait. Well, I better get right with God after all when I get to church. Hey, folks, if it's Monday, why are you waiting till Sunday? There's probably a lot of roads you might not need to be taken between now and Sunday. And all what I'm saying is getting out of fellowship with God, being in sin, okay, clouds your vision of what the will of God is in your life, dulls your hearing of what God wants you to do desensitizes you to understanding the peace of God in your life. So what I'm saying is, if, if you do blow it, miss it, sin, when you recognize, man, I shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have been doing these things, stop right there, tell God you're sorry, tell him that you ask him to forgive you, repent, turn the direction toward him, and say, Father, help me so I don't do that again. Guess what? You're back in fellowship with God. The first thing you need to do, stay in fellowship with God. Isn't that right? Amen. Do y'all say Jesus 
was the perfect example of living that way. He always did the will of God, always listened to what God wanted him to do, and God took care of him. He also had a lot of miracles happen in his life. Remember, all the miracles he did wasn't because he was the son of God. It was because he was a man anointed by God. You understand this. He didn't do any miracles until he got baptized with the Holy Spirit at age 30. Though he was as much the son of God when he was born as a baby as he was when they put him on the cross of Calvary. Well, you have the Holy Ghost. You're born again believers, aren't you? Yes. So he tells us, the son can do nothing of himself, John 5, 19, except he sees what the father, you know, you know shows him or, or reveals to him. For what things soever he doeth, these also does the son likewise. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. You and I as a believer ought to be living the same way. Father, you need to reveal to me what you want me to do. And you know the one way he can do that, or one of the biggest ways he can do that every day, is when you spend time in the word of God. There are the scriptures you read, the things you know inside of you, he reveals, he brings to mind when you're in a circumstance, a situation, comes and pops up to you, that's God speaking to you. How many times have you ever had the thought, you're ready to say something inside, something says, don't say anything, keep your mouth shut. Talked about those voices, right? Well, the, the voice of the word of God speaking to you is a pretty great one. All of a sudden, you're like, and you have to control yourself because you want to, but you bite that tongue of yours. And I'll tell you, when you do, you're so glad you did. You know, we have, a, we have an expression that, you know, Liz, of course, bless her heart, always laughs about. Was, you know, we, we, we kid all the time. But she, she, she said, Pastor, you've told me time and time again that um, it's okay to have an unspoken thought. You know, a lot of times you say, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some peace of my mind. I'm going to tell you what I think. And, and, and one time she was there, we we're sitting and she stopped and I said, well, okay, Liz, what is it? She goes, no, no, no. It's okay to have an unspoken thought. And I said, yes, it is. Just because it pops in your head, you don't have to let it come out of your mouth. Right? Think about how much better your life would be if you could control that tongue of yours. Let me clue you in. How many you want to, if you're married, how many want to be married a long time? See good days. Okay? Learn to control that mouth of yours. Wasn't there some popular singer that kind of put it this way? You got to think. Think. Sometimes you don't think before you say. And there's a price to be paid. Well, guess what? You need to think and say, is this going to glorify God? Is this in the will of God? Is this something Jesus would want me to say? Is this something Jesus would want me to do? If he was standing right by me, would Jesus be cheering me on or shutting me up? That should tell you something right now, what I should be doing next. Okay, praise God. One act, write this down. Just write this down. Trust me if you will. One act of obedience will open the door to the next blessing from God. One act of obedience, one act of obedience can open that door to the blessing of God. What we need to realize is every one of us have keys that open a bunch of doors. Some are good doors and some are bad doors. Some are God's doors and some are the devil's doors. Some are blessing doors and some are not blessing doors. And your act of obedience basically determines which key you're going to be using or not using. So if you get off in a situation and you're not obeying the will of God, you're opening doors that might best be and remain closed. So what's it worth to you? One of the things that, I just tell you, one of the things that motivates me is this. Because, you know, how many times do we all get tempted in areas? Tempted to be impatient or tempted to whatever, just name it. One thing that gets me is 
is this worth me preventing God from sending a blessing my way? Is this worth me missing out on something God's trying to get to me? I'll put it this way. If I, if I said, uh, if it was a situation that God ever appeared to you and said, for every time you go ahead and not say something that you want to say, but you know you're not supposed to say, I'll give you $1,000. How many of you would be motivated to shut that little pie hole of yours. Isn't that right? You'd be, whoo, no, 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 a thousand. Oh, man, I want to, no, a thousand. That's rank that. You'd be counting it up. That's a thousand right there. I'm two thousand right there. Four thousand right there. You'd be turning those vouchers in. Okay, today you owe me thirteen thousand, you know. Well, the fact of the matter is we need to look at it in the terms of I want to do the will of God. And God's got good things coming my way. Why would I want to be an obstacle to God getting to me what he wants to give to me? So I want to serve him because I love him. I want to know him better. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There are miracles waiting to be done by Christians who are obediently listening to the voice of the Father. And we need to expect these things. Anyway, i got to close here, but this is just a multi-day and we're running here. But let, let, let me give you this one scripture here that kind of brings this out and it just kind of encourages you. John chapter 2, beginning at verse 3 through 5, is a story of the first miracles of Jesus. John chapter 2, beginning at verse 3 through 5, said this. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, woman, what have I to do with you in this? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said now to the servants, whatever he says to you, you do it. Whatever he says to you, you do it. Jesus was being prevailed upon by his mom at a circumstance situation of a wedding that, again, they didn't have what they needed. They didn't have enough resources. Hey, I've been there before. I've been in circumstances. We have, we have been in circumstances before where all of a sudden you had, we've had people over. And all of a sudden, what we put out went quicker than what we anticipated. You know how it is when you got people over and all of a sudden we anticipate, you know, enough food. We have 50 people. We bought food for 100 people. But the 50 people ate enough food for 200 people. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? The, the, we had circumstances where they're coming up asking, can I bring a plate to my second cousin's twice removed uncle? You know, and they're just bringing stuff, heaping up. And the next thing you know, all your foods, you know. So we're going out trying to get more food. You know, you know, it's it's like it was you, you're trying to serve people. Well, Jesus' mother's in a situation where it's like, oh my gosh, these people are trying to and she just wants to jump in and try to help. So she goes to Jesus. I don't think anyone should criticize Mary going to Jesus. Folks, you know the thing about it is if you're in need and you need help, go to somebody that can help you. Does that make sense? Go to somebody that can help you. She went to Jesus because she knew Jesus can help. He is, after all, the Son of God. See, Mary had some insight into who, who her son really was and is. Let me ask you a question. Do you have insight into who Jesus is for you? Is he just your Savior? Or is he your Lord, too? Is he your healer, too? Is he your blesser too? Is he your sustainer as well? Is he your wisdom today? Is he your strength? Your power? See, you've got to ask yourself, what is he to me? Mary went to Jesus and said, we need some help here. And all she turned around, and I love this, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Obedience obedience and you know the third the circumstance jesus was easily entreated he was easily entreated of course you know he told them what to do everybody got what they needed and they were amazed at the at the blessing that was theirs 
I want to try to get you to do is the same thing. Jesus, and I say this nicely, he's a pushover. He loves you. He is in love with you. He is rooting for you. He is cheering you on. He wants to bless you. He's doing everything he can to try to sneak his promises and his words in your life so that God can honor it and bless you. He's not trying to withhold a thing from any of us. And for that, we should be eternally grateful. But what does he ask from us? Just do it my way. Just do it the way I ask. Do it in a way that proves and shows that you're following after the will of God. Here's how you do it. And that's why he gave us the word. So we know how we should be doing it. He doesn't expect us to do it perfectly. But he does expect us to do our best. And if we'll do that, God will meet us where we are. No matter where that happens to be. For some it may be way up here. For others it may be back here. But it doesn't matter. God knows how to get to every one of us. No matter where we happen to be. In our spiritual walk in life with God. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just understand and recognize you can do what the will of God says because you can do all things through Christ that gives you the strength. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So be obedient. Put the effort forward. Don't quit. Watch that mouth of yours. Follow after peace. And let God show you how great and mighty he is. For you know what? It's not a cliche. But it's the truth. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Amen. 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 Father, we love you with all of our hearts. It is our heart's desire to be a blessing to you. And Father, you have tailor-made so many great plans for us that we would want, that we desire, Father. We do not want what was made, prepared for others, but we want what was prepared and made for us to do. And all the glory and the honor goes to you, Father. Every one of us wants to live our best life. And by that, we want to be in the center of your will, doing what you ask and require of us each day. We love you, Father. We honor you. We cherish you. And above all things, we want to be right where you want us to be each and every day of our life. Father, you said in your word that whoever would call upon the name of the Lord would be saved. We have no reason to fear what comes after. We have no reason to doubt that you are not who you said you are. And Father, for all who would call upon the name of Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Cleanse me from all of the, the actions and the deeds of my life. And Father, give me a new heart. Allow my life to shine as a testimony of your faithfulness and of your love and of your forgiveness. And fill me with your Holy Spirit overflowing. You know, Father, a simple prayer. Just like that. Allows us to be now instantly transfixed into your family. Made a child of God. Forever living with you in heaven. And also, Father, faithfully serving you on this earth. We love you, Father, with all of our hearts, and we look to live our lives for your glory and honor. Thank you for taking hold of our hand and leading us each and every day that we live. To you be the glory forever and ever, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. For those of you that are joining us online, thank you for doing so. I know God's got a good plan for you. And hopefully, maybe some of the words that were said today will help you to see that plan come to pass. Don't ever be content with someone else's and don't ever look to someone else and, 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 and long to, well, I wish I was them. No, you don't. You want to be you. Because what God has in store for your life is good. It's great. Don't ever sell yourself short in that regard. Well, I tell you, if there's something we can do for you, I hope you reach out to us. You know, there's so many things God's doing in this world in which we live, so get involved with them. If we can do something for you, let us know. We're praying for you. If you've got a prayer request that you would like us to specifically pray for, let us know. That contact information is on the screen. Allow us to be a blessing in your life in this way.
If you would like to be a blessing to this church financially with your giving of support, that information is on the screen. We say thank you so much. Your faithfulness is appreciated and, and it's never taken for granted. You know, always know this. God's promised us that he would take care of our needs. He would minister to our wants and desires. So don't ever give up. Don't ever become discouraged. The Bible teaches us that we shall reap in due season as long as we don't give up. Continue to show yourself faithful to God and let him be able to see that you're in faith and show to you that he is a God that's more than enough. Well, until we see you again real soon, we'll be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central Time. Hopefully you will as well, either in person or online. We'll just remind you how much God does care for you. He loves you. And never forget this, Jesus is Lord. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye now.